Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. We are at the start of the 2025 season, and after a disappointing 2024, expectations are high for these Royals. Uh, we had a good preseason, best winning percentage in the American League Central. And we are projected to have the best record, not just in the AL Central, but the best record in the entire American League with 92 victories for this upcoming season. The team is largely the same as what we put on the field last year uh, with one major addition, Clayton Kershaw, who we signed to a one-year $17 million deal. Obviously a perennial all-star perennial Cy Young Award winner, former MVP, former Gold Glove winner, great personality, and a uh, future Hall of Fame pitcher. Uh, not quite the pitching ratings that he probably had in his prime, and he is coming off of a mixed season for the Orioles with a 105 ERA plus and a 119 FIP minus. Only had a war of 0.5 last year. The hope is that uh, moving to Kansas City from Camden Yards will give him a little more room to work with in terms of the ballpark. Um, and the hope is that he can head up our revamped pitching rotation this year to hopefully propel the Royals to a playoff position at the very least. Uh, Trevor Rogers, who we traded for a season ago, is back. Missed the entire second half of last season with a injury. Only a 1-5 record for us. Certainly expecting to get more from him. Already talked about Hershaw, Kershaw, our big free agent acquisition. And then Spencer Bauer, 24-year-old who had some injury issues last year but still came up and was dazzling with 55 strikeouts in 32 innings pitched at the major league level. Uh, will also slot into our rotation. So essentially two and a half new starters at the top of our rotation since we only got half a season out of Rogers and one start out of Bauer. And then Hayden Wesneski and Jose Suarez, uh, the rest of the pitching rotation. Chris Bubich is back. Uh, he would be our sixth starter in the event anyone does suffer an injury. And then we have a loaded bullpen, we think, that looks somewhat different compared to last year with Austin Roberts, uh, the rookie last year, up as our full-time closer, and then also hoping to get full seasons from the likes of Will Klein, Reed Goleman, R.J. Dabovich, among others, uh, among our younger younger relievers, and then Andy Ashby, who we traded for a season and a half ago, is also back in the rotation. Looking at our lineup, uh, lineup actually looks fairly similar to last season, although we have lost uh, Jeff McNeil, uh, only had enough money for one big free agent signing, and we decided to go with the hopefully top of the rotation starter in Clayton Kershaw. So we had to let Jeff McNeil go. Otherwise, the rest of the roster is very similar. We are hoping that the youngsters, uh, Peyton Williams, who blasted 32 homers between AA and AAA last year, and Zach Desenzo, who had 26 homers and 90 driven in in AAA last year, can give us much of the offense that we'll be losing from McNeil, and uh, we'll certainly be able to supplement the lineup a bit in a few weeks when Kike Hernandez is back from the injured list with a strained thumb. So, uh, Hoping that uh, it's going to be a big year for the Royals. Um, this is the fourth year of the Sim for us, and next season um, some of the salaries are going to start to get big with some of our arbitration-eligible players that we haven't been able to agree to longer-term contracts with. Rogers' contract expected to go up by about $5 million. Juan Yepes is going to go up about $2.5 million. Aaron Ashby could go up $3 million. Jose Suarez and Chris Bubich up both up about two million ish next year. Eddie's Leonard gonna be making three and a half million more. MJ Melendez potentially making five and a half million more. So um that is why Clayton Kershaw is a one year rental because uh, we really don't have a ton of money for extensions right now given that a lot of players are going to 
be making more money next season than they are making this year. So from that perspective, it's a bit of a win-now season for the Royals. Uh, we invested in Kershaw. We are trying to win right now. We'll see how the season goes. Uh, Going to be obviously difficult to bring Kershaw back since we don't have any money available for the 2026 season right now. Uh, the hope is clearly that we have a really good season, strong attendance, make lots of money, get some additional money from making the playoffs, and that hopefully our budget gets increased again next season based on that good performance. Maybe it allows us to bring a Kershaw back. Maybe it allows us to make some other moves. But um, we will deal with uh, whether we need to trade people away, whether we need to um, make some modifications to the roster for next season in next offseason. Right now, these Royals are focused on making sure to finally return to the playoffs in this 2025 season and then hopefully doing some damage with this team when we get to the playoffs. And the season has gotten off to a really nice start with a 9 to nothing win over the defending world champion Minnesota Twins on opening day. Kershaw, Mike Matheny pushing him to the limit, but a uh, five-hit shutout complete game for Clayton Kershaw to go on it 1-0 uh, on the year. No walk, struck out five, 109 pitches. Um, you know, we've uh, we've talked back and forth in some of the comments about whether uh, letting Matheny manage this team is one of our problems. Um, certainly for a 37-year-old uh, pitcher, seems a bit bold in this day and age to have them throw a 109-pitch complete game on opening day on March 27th. Uh, hopefully there won't be any lingering issues there. So uh, big win for the Twins over the defending AL Central champions and the defending World Series champions on opening day. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come for the season. Um, did have one little slightly negative piece of news in that our starting first baseman, Nick Prado, is uh, banged up with an intercostal strain for about a week. Uh, probably will throw him on the IL, only the 10-day IL, so we'll miss him for a couple of extra days. But um, get him on the IL, get someone else up to play, and that should um, you know ensure that the youngsters in the lineup... Um, Desenzo and Peyton Williams both get even a little more playing time over the next week or two until we get um, both Prado and Hernandez back, and then we may have to make a decision, um, particularly in the case of Desenzo, maybe send him back down to AAA so he can get a little more playing time there. Well, the season's off to a good start for the Royals on the field. Uh, we're 7-4. and four. Uh, We just uh, recently lost Nicky Lopez for four to five weeks to chronic back soreness, and now we've lost his backup, Melvin Moreno, to a strained PCL also for five weeks. So uh, we have got a big hole in our lineup at uh, shortstop right now, losing our two best defensive infielders. Would assume that either Nico Horner or Bobby Witt Jr. is going to slide over to shortstop in Matheny's proposed lineup. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be Nico Horner. So um, not optimal, but um, he is still a respectable defensive shortstop. Not a Nicky Lopez, but uh, still very solid. And uh, hopefully the depth that we have built up in the organization over the years will uh, will help us out through this patch of injuries. Because right now, in addition to those two, Kike Hernandez still on the IL. And then from the pitching staff, uh, Will Klein on um, also. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully things will get a little healthier and uh, we can manage through the next month, month and a half without uh, our top two defensive shortstops. Hopefully don't work uh, Nico Horner and Bobby Witt Jr. too hard because uh, depth in the organization at uh, shortstop at AAA is not great. Our options there are Clay Dungan, who is a uh, okay um has played in omaha for us the last several years not quite an average triple a hitter an okay glove certainly not the kind of glove you'd want at shortstop every day and then logan warmoth um a little bit better of a glove maybe but not uh not much of a hitter at all 29 year old who uh 
spent last year uh, as a backup in AAA. So we, we actually don't have great options for shortstops. So hopefully, um, hopefully Horner will be able to take over and uh, stabilize the position for the next, uh, next several weeks. And fortunately, uh, we were able to put Tommy Listella onto the major league roster. Um, not a shortstop, but a um, competent offensive and defensive player for a few of the infield positions. Uh, we had signed him to a minor league contract uh, before the injuries to both Moreno and Lopez. Uh, we had had him up briefly and then when Prado came back we waved and DFA'd him fortunately nobody picked him up um, so as soon as he was eligible we are bringing him back to the team um, hopefully you know if uh, Horner needs a day off here and there we'll slide Bobby Witt to short and um, you know Listella can maybe give us uh, some time at second base or third base along with Eddie's Leonard and uh, hopefully keep the defense behind our vaunted pitching staff playing well uh, until we're able to get our two of our best defensive players back into the lineup. And with the Royals playing very good baseball, 15-7, and seven, still first place in the AL Central, uh, longtime owner John Sherman has passed away. His son, Angel Sherman, will be taking over. Ooh, and he's got a nice personality, uh, lenient patience, charitable fiscal personality, hands off. Whoa, 41 years old, so he could be uh, our owner for a long time. Uh, still wants us to have a winning record this year and wants us to build up the team for the playoffs. But uh, hopefully um, this could make this play through very different. Uh, he has a much more... Uh, much more charitable and lenient to use the words that they're using personality with his staff than his father did so um that could make this a lot more interesting and, and potentially a little bit easier for us um we are in the final year of our contract so hopefully uh if the royals keep playing well and we achieve that winning record uh young mr sherman will be willing to uh give us a longer ex extension and um maybe also give us a little more money to spend going forward uh this could be really really significant for us and we've reached the month of may uh royals off to a really nice start 18 and 11 first place in the al central uh young closer austin roberts was just named pitcher of the month uh 3-0 record, 9 saves, 18 strikeouts, and 16 in two-thirds innings pitched for him. Uh, looking at the bigger standings, we're only up by a game and a half on the Twins and the Guardians, um, who are also the two teams that are leading the way in the wild card. So um, long way to go, and with a 4-6 and six record over our last 10, um, not playing as well as we had been. Um, that said, the record's still 18 and 11. The season is still off to a really nice start. Hopefully we can continue playing well until we get uh, Lopez and Moreno back. Uh, looks like we're looking at only another five days potentially till Nicky Lopez gets back, which would certainly uh, stabilize things for us defensively to have him back, although we'll probably send him for a game or two to uh, shake the rust off, so to speak, down in Omaha before we put him on the Major League roster. Well, we've simmed through to the middle of May. Uh, Royals not playing quite as well as we were, but still in first place with a 26-17 and 17 record. Um, looking at the standings, actually tied for first now with the defending champion Twins, but three games up on the Guardians. So, um, you know, we'd like to obviously uh, feel that we are uh, safe and secure as a playoff team, but it's only May 15th. We've got a lot of work till we get to that position. Uh, finally, at the position where we're going to need to potentially make some tough decisions about um, our 
26-man roster as Melvin Moreno uh, is back. Um, he's played a couple games in Omaha, so he is going to be ready to join the team. Uh, not much of a hitter, but just a fantastic glove. So I uh, really like to have him up at the major league level to play second, third, and short for us as a defensive substitute um, and also a player who will start from time to time when people need a little bit of a rest. The issue is uh, who we are going to send down to the minors at this point. Um, Zach Desenzo would be one option. Uh, has played reasonably well. Uh, 319 batting average, 5 homers, 17 ribbies, and 69 at-bats. Actually, I think you could say that's uh, he's done a lot better than played well. He's uh, he's really hit great for us. Uh, 151 OPS plus here in uh, limited action. Certainly not someone who's in the lineup and every day anymore now that the team is healthy, but he is more than holding his own. Um, Eddie's Leonard um, has been struggling. Uh, you can see he's batting just 189, 65 OPS plus. Um, like his defensive versatility, but his bat um, has been disappointing so far this year. He is an option to go down. Um, Vinny Pasquantino um, having a better offensive year than Eddie's Leonard. Uh, only four homers and 133 at-bats, but a 92 OPS+. plus. Uh, just looking at the ratings, according to our, our scout, looks like he's a little bit better of a bat than Eddie's Leonard, uh, but certainly does not have much uh, defensive ability and position versatility at all. And then the last potential option to send down would be Peyton Williams. Uh, he has not had as great a start to his career as Zach Desenzo has. Still though, seven homers and 18 driven in and just 92 at-bats, good for a 116 OPS plus. So um, got some tough decisions to make. Um, the issue with both Peyton Williams and Vinny Pasquantino is that they don't uh, don't necessarily have a position to play defensively. Um, that's what works in favor of Eddie's Leonard, that he can play second, he can play right, he could play third. Um, just hasn't hit much this year. And I think we are actually going to send Vinny Pasquantino down. Uh, this is his final year of option. Um, his offensive profile looks pretty nice, um, but his production has been, you know, pretty average-ish over the time he's been with us. The issue is just that, you know, he doesn't really have a position defensively. Um, I'd rather keep Eddie's Leonard around. Um, Melvin Moreno, we've, we've got better defensive flexibility there. And the other thing that I think if we send Pasquantino down, that on the margin is going to lead to more at-bats for the rookies, Peyton Williams and Zach Desenzo, in the way that those two have been hitting. And given that they are probably longer-term cornerstones of our organization compared to Vinny, uh, we are going to actually send Vinny down to... Triple A, bring up Melvin Moreno to the roster. Have Matheny update his uh, depth chart, and that did get Peyton Williams and Peyton Williams at least back into the lineup as our DH against uh, left handed batters. Zach Desenzo not in any starting lineups right now. Uh, hopefully, we can continue to get him some at bats going forward. And the calendar has turned to June. Uh, the Royals had been struggling there for a little bit, but seemed to have turned things around. Um, still tied for first in the AL Central, although now it is with Cleveland and rather than Minnesota. Uh, playing really well lately, 8-2 and two in our last 10. The same record as Cleveland, actually. And you can see Minnesota was ahead of both of us. But uh, the Twins have been struggling lately. Uh, some more good news for the team in terms of our youngster performance. Um, Peyton Williams, American League Rookie of the Month, uh, 380 with eight home runs and 21 runs batted in during the month. So for the season, uh, the youngster now has 12 dingers and 29 batted in and 140 at-bats. Has played in just 39 of our 59 games played, so not getting into the lineup as regularly as we would have hoped, but still if he can piece together a season with 350, 400 at-bats, um, feel that it's better to have him at the age of 24 up here in the majors um, rather than playing every day down in AAA. 
Um, so a nice start to the career for Peyton Williams. Uh, we are going to hopefully be able to sim the next uh, month or so to get to the midway point of the season and then uh, check in and how our players are doing. Actually, just looking at attendance for the first time, um, fans are, you know, interest has kind of waned a little bit, but the team is playing so well that we have been uh, sold out almost every game until a little more recently. Hopefully we can... Uh, start stringing some more wins together and uh, maybe up the ticket price just a tad to 1750 um, I know I could probably go a little bit higher than that. Um, hopefully we'll keep playing well and uh, pick up a little bit of revenue. As I've talked out in the past, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, be masterminding this in increasing the ticket prices every week on people. Um, you know, just one of the house rules I play with. Um, actually, it's kind of cheesy to just increase it 50 cents as I'm talking through that. So if I'm going to make an increase, um, I'll at least increase it a buck to $18, but not something that I'm going to be monitoring game by game and changing incessantly over the course of the season. But the uh, team is playing well enough, and those who didn't buy season tickets, you know, you're going to have to spend an extra buck or so to see uh, the likes of Peyton Williams and Clayton Kershaw and the rest of the additions to this uh Royals team that thus far is uh, performing pretty well. And another injury for the Royals, uh, Kike Hernandez is going to be headed back to the IL with a sprained knee for five weeks. Um, has been hitting okay for us, 289 batting average, uh, four homers, 22 driven in, and 152 at-bats. Not the end of the world, um, obviously would prefer to have everybody healthy, but again, I think um, putting him on the IL is hopefully going to open up a little more playing time for the likes of Zach Desenzo and Peyton Williams, so from that perspective, uh, lets us get some of those bats into the lineup, and yep, that puts Desenzo in as our cleanup hitter against lefties, um, playing first base, and then uh, Peyton Williams stays in the lineup as our DH against righties, so a little more playing time for Desenzo. So it sounds like with the injury to Kike. So uh, hopefully we'll have him back around the All-Star break and we can continue uh, playing good ball until then, although we are half a game out of the division right now. But our uh, 615 winning percentage is still very solid. So the Royals continue to chug along 46 and 28, first place in the AL Central. Although we're still tied with the Guardians, but now six and a half up on the Twins. So, um, you know, the two best records in the American League are us and the Guardians and the Twins. Uh, also very much in contention for a playoff spot. So the uh, AL Central looks like a pretty strong division. A uh, little bit of bad news. Uh, rookie starter Spencer Bauer, who has been solid for us, a six and four record, four point six one ERA, which is only good for a ninety five ERA plus, but has put up an eighty six fit minus and one point four WAR. Uh, continues to blow people away with his stuff with ninety two strikeouts and sixty eight and a third innings, day to day with a sore shoulder for one to two weeks. Uh, moderate influence on his throwing. Uh, he has had some injury issues in the past. Uh, we are just going to, in the total interest of caution, put him on the IL for 15 days, not mess around. Um, we've got enough depth in AAA that um, we are going to bring Scott Kobos, who we had sent down early in the, in the year, back up to the Major League roster. Uh, see how Matheny signs things up. That'll move Chris Bubich back into the rotation. Um, gives us four lefties in the rotation. And while we're talking, we'll check in on how the pitchers are doing. Uh, Trevor Rogers, a much better second season than his first. Uh, seven and four record, 94 strikeouts and 77 innings pitched. 156 ERA plus, 69 fit minus, already a 2.3 war on the season. So a really nice season from our erstwhile ace. Uh, Clayton Kershaw has been a little bit more mixed. Six and four record, um, 
410 ERA, which is good for a 106 ERA plus a 98 FIP minus, only 1.2 war. So he is faring better than he did last year pitching um, his home games in Baltimore and Camden Yards. Has not been exceptional yet, but uh, has still been a slightly above average starter for us. Um, obviously had that wonderful game in the first game of the season for us with the shutout against the Twins. Uh, hopefully he can pitch a little better and remain healthy down the stretch. Hayden Wisniewski is 3-3, three and three, and then Jose Suarez 7-0 and oh, with a 2.05 ERA so far. So the uh, 27-year-old lefty uh, having an excellent season for us at this point. Um, got about another week, week and a half or so until we'll be at the midway point of the season, actually probably closer to two weeks. Um, and we will check in then, hopefully no more uh, significant injuries between now and then for these Royals. And just as I said that, uh, MJ Melendez, torn ACL, starting catcher out for eight to nine months, not good. Uh, he was having a nice year for us, seven homers, 29 ribbies, 212 at-bats, 114 OPS+. Plus. Had put up a 1.9 war for us, uh, captain personality, um, definitely not good. Um, he's also going to be heading into the years where he's going to be more expensive for us, potentially in arbitration, but clearly for a... Uh, team that is trying to compete to not just make the playoffs but hopefully make a run at a world series this year losing our 26 year old starting catcher for the season is not optimal the only positive thing um you know we've got cam gallagher who you know we don't necessarily want to be playing every day maybe a slightly above average defensive catcher at this point. Um, the only positive thing we do have going for us is that we had picked up uh, James McCann in the offseason, signed him to a minor league contract. We also have Trey Barrera and Shea Lengelet, um in AAA. Uh, solid defensive catcher with Shea, but not much of a bat at all. James McCann, not quite as good defensively, but a more uh, acceptable major league bat, although he has hit only 180 in Omaha thus far this year. Oof, a 51 OPS plus. I mean, he profiles as better. Um, 138 batting average for Shea down in AAA. Hard to imagine bringing him up. And then just Trey Barrera is kind of our third catcher there. A solid major leaguer. Um, we are going to bring up McCann for the time being. Um, clearly, we may want to, as we get closer to the trade deadline, um, see if there are any catchers who people are looking to dump that we can bring on for a relatively low price. Um, Matheny uh, views McCann as the starter, uh, which is fine. I think he probably is a little better than Cam Gallagher at this point. So um, it's not a perfect replacement for MJ Melendez, but um, being able to have somebody like James McCann waiting in your minor league system for this type of um, unfortunate incident um, is about as good of a near-term replacement as we can potentially hope for. Looking at if there are any catchers kind of out on the trade block now. Um, a few Luis Torrens and Aramis Garcia, kind of the highest rated. Torrens, you know, not much of a different profile than McCann. I think McCann's probably a little better uh, defensively. Aramis Garcia, uh, more solid defensively, but not as good a hitter. You know, nothing too exciting there now, but doesn't mean that there won't be other players added to the trade block in the coming weeks. And it also doesn't mean that if we are unhappy with what we are getting from Gallagher and McCann, that we can't just make an offer for somebody who doesn't happen to be on the trade block. So we'll see how those guys do over the next couple of weeks. Um, clearly not optimal to lose our starting catcher. Hopefully it doesn't have too much of a negative impact on the pitching staff. Um, will definitely be a uh, impact on our lineup, though, as I do not expect either Gallagher or McCann to hit nearly as well as MJ Melendez does, unfortunately. 
And we've made it to the midway point of the season. Uh, Spencer Bauer has had a couple of setbacks with his uh, injury, so um, still out for at least another week. Glad we were conservative with him and put him on the IL rather than pushed him. Uh, we also recently had to put Nico Horner on the IL, and he's suffered a, a setback there too. Not optimal, but um, hopefully we will have him uh, back in a week or so also. Got to the mid-season review of the goals with our new owned owner, Angel Sherman. Um, we're 49-31, and 31 and all he wanted us to do was have a winning record, so he's uh, ecstatic with our progress so far this season. Um, so are we. Things are finally coming together somewhat. Um, we're still not in first place, two games behind the Guardians, who are, are playing some excellent ball right now. Uh, but we are up six and a half uh, for the wild card. Obviously, our preference would be to avoid that wild card game. Right now, Cleveland and us have the two best records in the American League. So uh, the goal is certainly going to be to win the AL Central so we can avoid um, you know, the best out of three wild card series and instead hopefully have home field advantage for a best of five divisional series. But uh, a lot of work to do between now and the end of September to hopefully make that a reality. So turning to the expanded standings, which have been the bane of our existence over the past few seasons, um, we're still actually underperforming, uh, but only by two games. Uh, so the team has been closer to what we should have done, at least based on our run differential thus far this year. Um, still have the best run differential in the American League at plus 114. And uh, that is actually the best run differ dif differential in all of baseball. So uh, hopefully that is a sign that we will finally get over the hump this season and hopefully get into the playoffs. But obviously the preference is going to be to hopefully win the division and hopefully get a first round by, avoid that wild card series. Clearly going to need to remain healthy to get there. Um, Looking at the team, nobody really kind of stands out in the top three in terms of the batting figures, but uh, Jose Suarez continues to lead the AL with a 2.23 ERA, and Trevor Rogers having that real good uh, first full season, hopefully with us, with a 2.74 ERA. Austin Roberts, the youngster, leads the American League in saves, and Trevor Rogers is tied with Shoei Otani, and Patrick Sandoval uh, leading the league in pitcher war at two and a half. So a solid start from the rotation so far. Uh, obviously would be nice to get Spencer Bauer back in the not so distant future and hopefully have Nico Horner and Kike Hernandez back eventually too. Checking in on Clayton Kershaw, uh, although he's lost um, since we checked in on him when he was uh, six and four, he's six and five now. ZRA has come down to 4.01, 109 ERA plus, 96 fit minus. Uh, hopefully, we can get a little more from him over the second half of the season. Checking in on the offense midway through the season, Bobby Witt Jr. Um, on his way to perhaps the best season of his uh, career. Already has 20 homers, driven in 49 runs, hitting 286, putting up a 134 OPS plus with that 875 OPS. 3.2 war already, by far the best among any of our offensive players. Uh, the only thing I guess we can ding him for, he only has eight stolen bases. He has been a 2020 homer and steal guy in each of his first three major league seasons. So we'll need to be running a little more on the base path to uh, achieve that again this year. Uh, Nicky Lopez has put up a 1.1 war, obviously missed some time with the injury. Peyton Williams, a uh, really good start to his career. 18 homers and 43 driven in and just 208 at-bats. Uh, 126 OPS plus for him. Nick Prado, 15 homers, 43 ribbies. Uh, Zach Desenzo has not had quite the playing time that Peyton Williams has. Has only played in 36 of our 80 games, but does have eight homers in 106 at bats. Would love to be getting him um, a little more action on a daily basis, so may need to um, tweak things with Matheny to ensure that the youngster is getting some at bats. Kyle Lewis, who we had the guru storyline with last offseason, which scared us for a while, um, 
has been respectable, hitting 239, seven homers, 39 driven in, only a half a run of war so far this year. Um, Juan Yepes, nine homers, 42 ribbies, hitting 274. Um, Eddie's Leonard, as I talked about earlier, definitely struggling, hitting just 199 on the year. James McCann hitting only 143 in his limited time up, and uh, Cam Gallagher batting 274 for us. So uh, those two will be splitting the catcher role for the rest of the season until we potentially make another move. Uh, last but not least, Vinny Pasquantino, who is back with the big team now with the injuries we've suffered, uh, six homers and 162 at-bats. So um, the offense has been okay. Pretty pleased with the pitching staff, as I mentioned. Um, you know, Rogers, Suarez, Austin Roberts, Kershaw, I've talked about all of them. Wisniewski, 4-3, and 5.38 ERA, so, so not great from him. Um, Mackenzie Gore has finally been up for a good chunk of the season, pitched well for us out of the bullpen, uh, 3.12 ERA with 62 strikeouts and 49 innings. Aaron Ashby, uh, respectable 3.97 ERA, 42 Ks in 34 innings pitched. Will Klein, 348 ERA. Reed Goleman, 4.28. Not optimal, but hopefully he will get better. RJ Dabovich, a 2.63 ERA, 42 strikeouts in 37 and two thirds. Bubich, uh, solid once again, um, giving us action out of both the bullpen and in the rotation when we had injuries 3.83 era kobos who we just brought back up 4.15 era and then dylan coleman thus far for us uh not a great year uh 5.11 era um 37 innings pitched he has been a pretty respectable reliever for us for the last several years but uh certainly someone um who we may look to move on from as we get closer to the trade deadline but we will focus on our plans for potentially improving this lineup um in our next episode when we sim through the month of july and all of the excitement of uh international amateur free agents the draft and then most importantly for these royals uh the trade deadline uh those of you who have watched my Yankees series know that when my team is in contention, um, I like to do something at the trade deadline to add some talent and make things better. In a little bit of a precarious position right now with only $913,000 to spend. So uh, we'll have to get creative and may have to um, send along a prospect or two to get people to retain salary. Or we may have to do something even more creative and uh, trade away someone who's making a little bit of money on our major league team. Could be looking at you, Kike Hernandez, when you get back. Uh, that would free up a little bit of money for us and uh, hopefully ensure that both Peyton Williams and Zach Desenzo get a little more playing time here at the majors. But pleased so far that the season is uh, finally proceeding according to plan. Obviously no, um, no certainty that injuries or underperformance can't derail us from that. But at this point, um, you know, the Royals on pace for close to 100 victories on pace to be in the playoffs. Uh, the big question is whether we can keep playing that well the rest of the year and hopefully get into a division leading position ahead of Cleveland and um, possibly Minnesota if they get back into the mix to hopefully hopefully win the AL Central and hopefully avoid that wild card series. But we will figure out what happens on that end over the next three months of the season. Until then, finally some good news from the Royals. Uh, having a decent season so far. Thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.